going to go to the top of this mountain. It's a place I've camped at before. It, it's not the top. It's right in a big old saddle. We'll go up there and see what it's like. And if you don't know me, my name's Brett. I got hounds and mules. And I like to ride out here in the back country. Put my dogs on the ground, ride through the country. As that guy said, it fills my soul. You know, with everything going on in the world today, being prepared and having a place to get away to, and the means to do it, I think is pretty important. Having a place of refuge, a camping spot, remote camp, somewhere where social unrest might not be as pronounced. Besides, there's something about disconnecting, escaping, and going off grid and getting remote. It's a lot of fun. So today, I'm gonna to go check out this remote bug out camping spot. I've been there once before. So come ride along with me. Enjoy the Southwest Wilderness Desert. Here we go. Onward and upward. I got up this morning kind of wondering where I should go. I need to see some different country. I need to get up higher. And this is still desert, but at least they have trees up here. You know, there's certain things that I have to have. <laughs> you know, it has to be the right spot. So I thought, I remembered, I'd been up here and I'd camped up here one time. So I thought, well, I can't, I'll go up here and see what it's like. I know, if all a guy wanted to do was hunt lions, this would probably be as good a spot as any place. Man, I'm pretty soft after that, that heart deal. <laughs> anyway, I left from the house, drove up here. Takes me about an hour and a half. But I brought a pack mule too, I brought Ruth. Don't really need her today, but she needs to get used to, to going. I need to get used to taking her. And she's out of shape. She's like the rest of us. So this is all good exercise for, you know, it's like, it's like anything else. The more you do it, the more proficient you become at it. It's like saddling. Agnes. Heck, I can saddle Agnes with my eyes closed. And I mean, I'm still pretty used to it. I've packed quite a bit, really. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The more it becomes second nature. The faster you get, the more proficient you get. Look at that. Not a moment too soon. You see that right there? Do you know what that is right there? That's the mounting rock. They put that there just for old men like me. Ooh, right there is perfect. Ooh. Another tip. Just sit so much snug. First thing, ho, 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 ho. And then, ho. After you go down the trail for a ways, tighten them up. Or after they've sat there for a, for a while, you can also do it then. I gotta put this camera down. I can only do so many things with one hand. This is good lion country. I'm gonna ride right off, drop down into this canyon, work around that canyon, and then work my way up to the top into that big saddle up there and have a look around there. See if there's water, I gotta see if there's water down the bottom of the canyon, cause that's a prerequisite. I have to have access to water. I don't wanna pack water. I wanna have a nice camp where there's water.
usually a bunch of elk on that big mountain right there. They move up and down that slope. Used to be anyway. I know a couple uh, pretty successful guides that come in here and bring clients and kill an elk. Because not many people know how to get right back in here. It's pretty tough because it looks like you're going through private property, but you're really not. They just made it look that way. And matter of fact, one of the guides that guides elk hunters in here and deer hunters, he's the one who told me how to get in here because, you know, he said, well, but he said, hey, while we walked in there and on our way out, he said there was a lion track over the top of our tracks. And I've cut lion tracks in here several times. And I also, also caught a big old tom in here. I, I, I started him way back. Oh, I don't know, several miles back that way. Trailed him all day one day. Came back in the next day and cut across, tried to cut him off. And sure enough, I hit it right and he'd killed a big old cow elk. And uh, I went and caught him. I say I did. Booger and owl and rusty, I don't know. They're, the dogs went and caught him. I went and looked at him. I didn't harvest him politically correct term harvest. I didn't kill the sucker. Why do you say harvest? It's not like you're going out to the garden to, or out in your alfalfa thing and harvesting your alfalfa or something. <laughs> politically correct. We all get into it, I guess. Lots of game in here. Elk, deer. There's some cows in here too. I haven't seen a lion track though. There might be one right around the corner. And a lot of times, this little creek bottom has water in it. That's what I was kind of hoping is that there would be water down here and then I could find a a nice open level spot right maybe right below that saddle because that saddle is where I camped before and what was nice about that saddle is there was cell phone service up there there's some water but it's not enough that's jazz too coming right out of this water hole. They got the happy tail. Just give me a little happy tail. <laughs> They're wiggling it back and forth. They really like it. Ah, uh, we'll see, it's probably a fox. Right there is a bear track. Right there, right there, right there. He probably came down to get a drink of water there. And those dogs could smell him on that rock. No! Pee! Pee! See that they're probably on this rock again. See ya. Yeah. He's not usually bad about wanting to trail a bear. I thought I seen another track there too. I wasn't completely sure. Yeah. That bear is still down here. Who is 
use that. That's iris. Don't want to be running no stinky bears. If they are trailing him, they're trailing him backwards. So that's good. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to run a bear. I'll be looking for my dogs for three days. But I thought I seen a another track in there. Looked like a lion track. I could be making it up. Those pups might change their mind about running a bear if they run up here and find one. They might think, ooh, we're not bear dogs. Now we gotta head right up through there. We're gonna go right up that hill, and then that big saddle is where I wanna go. And I just got cell phone service. Ruining my wilderness experience. <laughs> there he is again. A bear's been a lot of places in here. Watch out, Chaz. There. That's a different bear. That's a smaller bear right there. And they do have some big old Boone and Crockett rattlesnakes up here. Should be too cold for them though. Maybe up here on top that pond's got water in it. If it did, it wouldn't be a bad place, I don't think. I need to look at it again. I, like I said, I camped there one time before. Look at those quail. I call them fool's quail. They'll jump out right underneath your mule. Look at them. Ah, those are cool. His horns go way on up there. That's pretty high. For those that don't know, that's where a bull elk was rubbing his horns on a on that little sapling there. Oh, I forgot to film it. I picked up my game camera. I had a game camera up here for forever, right here by this saddle on a game trail. Of course, the battery is dead, and I don't have a reader with me, so I can't see what the SD card holds, but I will share it right now. All 
All right, pretty cool, huh? I need to put out more and more of those cards, or cards. I need to put out more and more of those cameras, I guess. Trying to get an idea of what's moving through the country. Never know, I might get a picture of an alien or a Sasquatch or a Jaguar. <laughs> yes, sir, here we are. This is that saddle. Now, I camped here one time before. And it has a lot of things that I like. It has a big old meadow right here. You could hobble your mules, a lot of grass. I know a lot of people back east don't know that's grass, but that little brown grass like that, that I think it's grammar grass, they call it. It's pretty nutritious. And there's lots of firewood. But, and, oh, and the cell, and uh, you got cell service up here. That's an advantage in this country, and it's super good lion country. But, water. I don't want to pack water unless I have to. Now, there's a pond, a dirt tank right over here. If it has water in it, then I could pack my tent up here and set it up. No, it's dry as a popcorn fart. Jeez. Hmm. The creek down below is dry. And that's dry. Well, it was worth a try. At least I got my camera out of here. I'll show you where I camped before. I made a video. See, this fence has a cowboy gate right up the way there that not many people know about. So you don't have to tear down the fence and build it back up to get through. You can go through that cowboy gate. Let me see, last time when I camped, I'll recognize it, I think. Come on. It was right there. Right in those trees right there. It was nice. I enjoyed it. I think, matter of fact, right now I'm gonna tie these mules up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat a little lunch. Yes, sir? A nice place. I tell you what, the advantages of it is, is I know this country real well. And if you if you got your hounds, you can go that way, that way, that way, back that way. There's lots of big old circles you can make right in here, all in real good country. But I gotta have water. I don't wanna pack water. Guess I could if I had to. Ah, I don't know, there's other places. We'll keep looking. Do I sit in the sun or the shade? They're a little bit tired. It's, it's a pretty good climb up to this spot. I think I'll sit right on the edge of the sun and the shade. How about that? This place has everything it takes to be a good camp. It's remote and yet not too hard to get to. I mean, uh, I don't know what it takes me, probably a couple hours to ride to this spot. And, and there's no easy access to it. Not many people know how to get here. 
If there had been many people here, my game camera wouldn't have been here any longer. One of those thieving deer hunters or elk hunters would have, would have stolen it. <laughs> Look at that country. Every time I have a view like this or I'm up here like this, I, I think about that Dale Goo, Goo, and Jeremiah Johnson. Ain't this something? I told my pap and mam I was coming to the mountains to trap and be a mountain man. <laughs> Acted like they was gut shot. Says, son, make your life go here. Here's where the peoples is. Them mountains is for animals and savages. Uh, I said, Mother Q, the Rocky Mountains is the marrow of the world. Ah. Yep. The marrow of the world. <laughs>